making some of them say, more acceptable in some regions and less so in others. At the weekend, Lagos, the, uh, seen as the stronghold of the, the APC party presidential candidate, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, became the flashpoint as the Labour Party spokesperson and those reported to be political hirelings attempted to disrupt the Labour Party's rally there. But such was the mass of people in attendance that it prevented what could possibly have been a much more violent. So violence exploding at your rally in Lagos, not the best way or the best note on which to end your season of rallies, is it? I mean, it's not, it's not our controversy. I mean, it was violence against us. So um, I would say that we should look at the bright side. We were welcomed so well by, by Lagosians. I mean, we went to Alaba Inter um, International Market, and the love there was so much. These people trekked with us all the way to the highway kilometers and made sure that we felt so welcome. They came to receive the message, and that's what we should focus on. Lagosians do want to vote for Peter Obi. In fact, you know, the entire time they kept saying Lagos for Peter. It was a lot of chants, a lot of songs. They have formed songs among themselves. It was really great to see. So, I mean, we're really sad that this happened but at the end of the day we had a very good rally it showed it was it was such a show of, of, of a lack of a better word first because a lot of people came out it was a great rally and, and that is what we choose to focus on unfortunately of course there was violence I mean who, who do you think is behind it or was it just sort of random acts of no, it's violence not, it's not random. Because, I mean we know that Lagos has a lot of brawling crowds of so-called area boys who who are sort of rather excitable and who tend to act sort of violently unbidden and whenever there's sort of a frenzy of excitement. And un unfortunately, you know, this is one of the things that my, my, my principal is seeking to, to end. The whole, you know, this issue where people are unproductive and are left, you know, to be fertile grounds for violence. And I wish that some of these boys would understand that, look, a Peter will be presidency means a better life for them. You'll be more productive. You will be, you know, again, from consumption to production is the watchword for us. You'll be more productive. You'll be able to do things for yourself, contribute to your society and not have to resort to this. And I will say, you know what, we can point directly because even from last year, since last year, when young obedience said that they were going to Organized rallies in Lagos and other parts of the country. They gave them threats. We saw these threats on Who's social they? media. APC youths. We saw threats right. on social media saying, "Come out if you think you can come out." I think that that rally was supposed to be for October first, and there were there were tweets that come out and will show you who are the real owners of Lagos. So if after seeing things like that, we come and see that people who are organizing themselves. I mean, these are not party hirelings. These are Nigerians, ordinary Nigerians, sacrificing their time and energy to see that their preferred candidate, a man they trust so much to deliver for them, they're sacrificing their time and energy, and then they show up and get attacked on their way to the rally. It's really sad. For any Nigerian, Nigerians should feel safe. Whether they are campaigning, whether they are not campaigning, we should be able to have a safe country. Absolutely. We should be able to have a safe country, and it's sad. But again, I would say that we should point to the fact that many of these young men who are participating in this are just largely because they are unproductive. Productive. They have been kept like this in a system that seeks to keep people poor so that they can use them, take advantage of them for things like this. And this is what we seek to end. Unfortunately, we are victims of it. But the Peter Obi, Obi presidency is going to target things like this and ensure that our youth are more productive. But, I mean, why would the APC target the Labour Party in Lagos? I mean, does the Labour Party have the capacity to really upset the apple cart for the APC and Tinubu in Lagos? Because conventional wisdom suggests that it doesn't. You know, several times, Tinubu has come really close to losing Lagos. So, you know, we can't... Lagos vote is one thing that you, is always almost split in the middle. So, you know, this, this, this fallacy, this conversation that seems to make it look like overwhelmingly APC has Lagos, as if they haven't, you know, escaped by the whisk, by, by whiskers in the past. It's, it's not... I don't think that that should follow. I think that Lagos is for the taking. From what I saw in Lagos, I was there on Saturday, Lagos is for the taking. Overwhelmingly, I mean, today, Peter Obi went to Mushin, Mushin of all places, and the support there was really large. Everywhere we go, once people realize that, oh, this is Peter Obi's vehicle moving, you can see people. And the thing with Lagos, this is one of the best places or one of the major places where people are organizing themselves. I was in Lagos before I went this time. I was there a couple of weeks ago. And you can see that, you know, the, the Uber drivers, I, the, the Uber vehicles I entered from the airport, from my hotel, you would see these people talking about how they are organizing themselves. Say, in my ward, in my locality, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. This is my contribution to the campaign. None of these people are paid. People are bringing themselves, bringing their own resources, and they're volunteering for the campaign and that's what we're seeing in Lagos I tell you Charles Lagos is for the taking and like I said these people have escaped APC has been escaping you know Tinubu structure has escaped by by whiskers just by very very thin margins some of the time and I don't think that this time is going to is going to favor them but I mean surely it's not a policy of the APC to go out and organize gangs and thugs to physically physically attack and intimidate their opponents I mean mm -hmm. they've called because I've heard them speak about this they've called for the full weight of the law 
to come down on those who have done this and insist that they want to win the election fair and square. Do, do, you, do you see their point there? No, I don't. I, I think that those are lies. And it's, it's you know, stoning someone or beating someone and hiding your hand. And it's, I mean, this is not new. They, they did not invent this style of uh, politicking or behavior. I mean, it's, it's been there since. Uh, but I'll point to, you know, Things like this happen because we are under policed, you know. There isn't enough um, protection for Nigerians. And that's why it's so easy for people to do this and be able to run and hide. And, you know, the perpetrators, you can't lay hands on the perpetrators. And so even the perpetrators can come out and begin to speak as if they're not the people who carried out these things. But this is clearly the playbook of ABC. They have been violent in this election. This is not the first time obedience have been attacked in Lagos, you know. The, the obedient flag boy, you remember that young man that used to carry the flag? He was attacked. This is not the first time. And, you know, for, for Nigerians, ordinary Nigerians to decide that this election were not going to do voter apathy we're going to not only come and vote but we're going to put in our effort during the campaigning season and then to just see this kind of brutality method on nigerians is, is quite sad it's quite sad it, it makes us wonder you know with everything we have suffered why would anyone be against change hmm. why well let me just say that in the best traditions of uh, international journalism mm -hmm. of which arise news associates itself yeah. i mean the the apc are welcome to have a right of reply to some of the allegations that are made against them and the link that's being made to them to this these attacks uh, in, on the labor rally in in lagos but i understand though from some of your colleagues that there were gaps in the labor party's own arrangements and preparations which might have fed into this violence and added fuel to the fire what might these gaps be and are, are you able to sort of plug them going forward. I don't, I, I don't think that there were gaps. And this is why I would say this. Well, right? some of your colleagues said that. I, I won't I mean, mention people, names, yeah, but certainly people, some of your colleagues People do yeah. have their, their opinions or mm. their thoughts on issues. But you have to realize that when when Labour Party is moving to a place, people are following. And you can't tell where these people are going to come from. But once they hear that Peter Obi is going to be somewhere, people will put on their regalia, carry themselves, and come to that place. Mm. So what do you do? You would be expectant. That's it. People are going to come, and we're happy they're going to come, and we've announced this. I mean, law enforcement should know that a rally, you cannot have a rally in TBS without taking permission. You can't. So everybody's alert and knows that a rally is going to happen. Adequate preparation should have been made. We cannot come and take over the work of law, enf law enforcement in Nigeria. We cannot come and take over policing. But as, as, long as, as long as a popular candidate is going to be somewhere, you know that Nigerians are going to gravitate towards, towards, towards that mm. venue. And it's up to the state government, it's up to the federal government to have prepared for this, for, 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 for this rally. Mm. On our own end, every, every form of preparation that the Labour Party should have done for that rally had been done. I do not think that it is the fault of the victim that attacks happened. The only reason that attacks happened on Labour Party people and supporters is because violent people decided to attack. So if you say, oh, you didn't protect yourself enough, you know, from the attacks, I think that that is, that is a bit of victim blaming. I, I, I think so. And I don't think, I mean, in, in campaigns, it's really typical for people to be dissatisfied and all of that. But with respect to this, if we're looking at it from this, you know, from the right point of view, is that you can't really blame a person for being robbed, for being attacked, for being beaten. The only reason that happened is because the perpetrator chose to do it. Hmm. Labour Party people have, you know, Labour Party supporters have organized themselves in the most peaceful manner throughout these uh, elections. It's quite sad that this is happening. And of course, you went on Twitter subsequently um, telling uh, the relevant authorities to investigate and deal decisively with the perpetrators. I mean, were you impressed with the way the police reacted to those attacks, the speed? No, not really. And I would say that, you know, what I would have expected is for them to be proactive first that the first thing, the best treatment is prevention. The best treatment for anything is prevention. And yeah, I but a lot of that, that happened for people on the way to the yes, rally. Yes, and I, I mean, feel, so again... Can't really, the police that can't secure every inch of, of the of No, the they state. can't, but then you know that, you know, these are the routes that people are going to be using to come here, and I think that they should have been better prepared. Um, at the end of the day, by the time I was leaving the rally, I saw, you know, I saw a contingent of policemen, mm. army men, and all of that coming there, and I would want to thank them, but, you know, up till now, I do not think that, you know, at this point, we shouldn't be able to lay our hands on the people who did this you know it wasn't just one person it was several hot spots and at least we should at least let's 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 just see one arrest and then i don't think we're, mm. we're seeing that fast yeah I, I think a lot of people would agree with you so so given what has happened with your rally in in lagos i know you touched on this briefly okay. i mean has that shattered your hopes of making some electoral inroads in lagos no, in particular not, and not the not southwest in general not at all not at all the southwest is for the taking look the southwest has never religiously gone one way their votes are split. 
This is a very educated region. Their mm. votes are split. They, they tend to make very informed decisions, and it's not usually in one line. So again, the Southwest is open for the taking. They are open for a convincing argument, and that is the thing that Peter Obi has. He has a convincing argument. And the second thing is he lacks trust deficit. People trust this man to deliver. His antecedent, you know, this man has been on the right path for a very, very, for a very long time. People believe him. And that is something that is very tough in the Nigerian terrain. When politicians speak, people will be like, we've heard this before. We do not believe him. But people overwhelmingly believe Peter Obi. And Lagos is one of those places where people believe him. One of the things that make me, you know, really believe in this is that, look, more than anywhere else, people are organizing themselves in Lagos. Look, we did not pay for a single bus to bring anybody to the venue in Lagos. These people organized themselves in their corners and decided to come and that's it so I, I i mean what we saw in lagos again lagos was so good that after we left peter obi had to come back again mm. <laughs> today because we could not do lagos for just one day there's so many parts of lagos and everybody wants to witness this man everybody all of these markets you know we went to one market no you didn't come to us you didn't come to us people are sacrificing their time their energy and lagos is for the taking i really believe it